Uh, so question number one, some of you had already had a head start, so do any of you have questions? Yes, Brother Robert. Uh, okay, so, so <coughs> since we know, oh. right, the order of the King James Bible is like an millennial, uh -huh. uh, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Like helping us to discern the times, mm -hmm. um, you know, like Philemon, Titus, is, is there anything you could provide us from that? Okay, then. So then, concerning about the premillennial order of the books of the Bible, you're wondering if the last books, starting from where, uh, that will yes, show us the last times. Uh, I would say what, like the Titus and Philemon, because mm -hmm. that's like the end of the story. Mm -hmm. you know? Got it. Okay, then. So. I'll do the best I can. Let's go to the book of Titus first. Titus. What's interesting right here is that before the last times, before the tribulation hits, in the book of Titus, it starts out with the rapture before the tribulation. I think that's very telling in your books of the Bible. Titus is one of the most famous passages concerning the rapture of the church. Look at Titus chapter 2 and verse 13, please. Titus chapter 2 and verse 13. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God, uh, excuse me, and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So notice right here that we're waiting for that blessed hope. The rapture, for some of you who don't know, is also called the blessed hope. You'll hear that from time to time from some pastors. The blessed hope. The blessed hope is also called the rapture. And the book of Titus, it starts out with that event. Now, the books of the Bible, what's amazing about it, Brother Robert just mentioned briefly order, but they're in premillennial order. The books of the Bible, you'll find them in premillennial order, which is very interesting. And the question he asked was, the last book, starting, let's say, at Titus, from there, can it reveal something about the end times? So let's go to the final ones right here. Let's go through the final books of the Bible and see how they will relate to end times, the tribulation, the last days. Now, before Titus, <clears throat> it's very interesting when you look at 2 Timothy, right before Titus, look at 2 Timothy, Chapter 3, verse 1. Chapter 3, verse 1. This know also that in the what? Last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. Now, do you see all of this lining up with today? Yeah, it perfectly matches with today, what we're going through. So 2 Timothy, you could say, is the book that is, pictures our timeline right now. Right now. Look at verse 4. This is really good. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Isn't that very telling? Yeah. That should be very telling. That is today's day and age. Verse 5 is even more powerful. Having a what? Form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. See, that's why there are going to be pastors who have a form of godliness, a form of Christian. They really look like it, but they have no power. They deny the power. So what did that verse say? From such what? Turn away. You have to separate from those kind of people. That's why comes our church, the Bible Believers we come from independent fundamental Baptist background, but we study that King James Bible and dispensationalism and a lot of doctrines. So here we are, Bible believers. And that's why we turn away. That's why we're like minority of minority, so to speak. So that we're small, but we stand for the truth. So 2 Timothy perfectly pictures us. Titus, we can see the rapture right here. And then Philemon. We could see right here concerning Philemon, perhaps, that the picture that we can see right here is concerning Onesimus. Now, Onesimus, it's talking about a beautiful story. A lot of preachers use this story concerning about a slave who's been, uh, who ran away, but he's going to go back to his master, 
And then Paul said, you know, show him no, uh, don't do him any wrong or be hard on him. Uh, if there be any wrongdoing in that runaway slave of yours, put it on my account, he said. So there's a Christian master and a Christian slave. So this Christian slave named Onesimus, he ran away. But when he returns, Paul is begging the Christian master, you know, to show him goodness. Put that on my account. So we're going to read right here verse mm, 10. I beseech thee for my son Onesimus, whom I have begotten in my bonds. Uh, look at verse 16. Not now as a servant, but above a servant, servant, a brother beloved, especially to me, but how much more unto thee, both in the flesh and in the Lord. Uh, look at verse 18. If he hath wronged thee or oweth thee aught, put that on my account. Now, a beautiful picture of that, what we can see with Onesimus, is concerning about the judgment. Now, Christians have their own judgment. It's called the judgment seat of Christ. The judgment seat of Christ. So Onesimus can be a beautiful picture here of a person who's done wrong. And in this judgment seat of Christ, what happens to us? Our bad works are put in the fire and burned. So there will be a fire at the judgment seat of Christ. What happened to all my sins that I've committed against God in my Christian walk? Well, what happens is this, is that you're going to be judged by God for good and bad, your works, the good and bad. Your bad works go into the fire. Does that mean that you are, you burn in the fire? No, you yourself is saved because the wrong has been put upon Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, when he bled and died on the cross for you, the wrong that you committed has already been put on Jesus Christ's account. So because of that, at the judgment seat of Christ, God cannot judge you for the sins you've committed against him with hell fire. He cannot do that. It's been covered under the blood of Christ. Instead, your works are judged. And when your works are judged as a servant, they're burned in the fire. They're not put onto you. You have no dealing with that. You yourself is saved. Now you might say, where did you get that from? Look at, we're going to look at two places. We're going to look at 2 Timothy chapter 1 concerning Onesimus. He is definitely pictured as finding mercy at the judgment seat of Christ, which is interesting. And then 1 Corinthians chapter 3, please. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. <clears throat> we're going to look at 2 Timothy chapter 1. And then we're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Okay, let me explain the judgment seat of Christ first. Notice right here that your works, if they're not good, they're burned up. But you yourself is not burned. You can't go to hell even if you wanted to. Because sin was already placed on Jesus Christ. But look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Verse 13. Every man's work shall be made manifest for the what? Day. Okay, now remember that. There's a specific day that you're going to be called upon for that. One day, you, your works will be judged and burned. But remember this word day, because Paul's going to use it again for Onesimus, which is interesting. Let's keep reading here. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. See that? The fire is going to reveal it. The work. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Okay, notice if it's bad, look at verse 15. If any man's work shall be burned, see, it's not good, it's bad. If it's burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be what? Saved. saved. See, he's still saved. So no matter what sin you committed in your Christian life, you can't burn even if you wanted to, praise the Lord. The, your works instead are burned, but not you. Yet so as by fire. Now look at 1 Timothy, uh, 2 Timothy, excuse me, 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. And then we'll look at verse 16. Verse 16. Remember, Ones remember concerning Onesimus, how he was a runaway slave? So now let me give you a different person right here. So this one is going to be Onesiphorus. This is going to be Onesiphorus. 2 Timothy chapter 1. And then we will read verse 16. The Lord give mercy unto the house of Onesiphorus. 
for he oft refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain. Verse 18, the Lord grant unto him that he may find mercy of the Lord in what? That day. See, what day is he talking about? Why, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, the works being burned. And in how many things he ministered unto me at Ephesus, thou knowest well. So we see right here that it's very interesting that Onesimus, which is very, a very close name with Onesiphorus, but you see how both of these names right here, it would, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> it would relate to them, uh, their works and their account being placed on somebody else, finding mercy, finding rescue. So right here, Philemon, we could see the judgment seat of Christ, a great story right here. Now concerning Hebrews, let's go to Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. You know, this can be a long teaching itself, so I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to wrap this guy up. So let's cover Hebrews right here concerning last days. Well, we can see from Hebrews. All the way through Revelation, we can see the tribulation. So let me know if I'm out of bounds. But anyway... This book, you probably don't know this, but if you're a dispensationalist, then you will know this. This is not surprising to you. Hebrews through Revelation, they are epistles that have much application for the tribulation. So Hebrews through Revelation, we can say that this could apply to the tribulation in this time period. So Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1. God, who at sundry times and in divers manner spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these what? Last days spoken unto us by his son. That's why you're going to notice a lot of passages here in Hebrews. It talks about uh, losing your salvation, keeping the faith. Those verses are very infamously used among Christian churches to teach you can lose your salvation. But if you realize what time period it was, then it would not be a problem for you. It's at the tribulation. It's obvious, it's obvious you have to keep the faith in the tribulation. You have to keep it. You have to work hard to keep it. Why is that? Because you're going through the terror of the Antichrist, and you have to resist his persecution and his mark. Now, how many of you are willing to be tortured and die for the name of Jesus Christ? Perhaps most of you won't be able to do that. But here's the thing. What if God required that for your salvation? That would be a lot of work, wouldn't it? Yes, that's why Hebrews, you have to have that. You have to have that. Look at James chapter 5, verse 3. James chapter 5 and verse 3. Notice that it's, the timeline is tribulation again. Tribulation. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. You have heaped treasure together for the last days. See, it's the timeline of the tribulation. By the way, if you look at James chapter 1 and verse 1, it's not only talking about tribulation, but it's also talking about two things right here. It's talking about the nation of Israel. That's why we strongly believe that God is not done with the Jewish people. In the tribulation timeline, you got James 1.1, 12 tribes of Israel. Hebrews already told you. What book is it called? Hebrews, Jews. So the nation of Israel is under God's program here. If you go to 1 and 2 Peter, it talks about false prophets arising. So we can see the false prophet ruling over it. And then it also talks about first and second, third John, to be careful of the Antichrist, as there are many Antichrists. So you see the Antichrist. And then you cover Jude. It talks about Jesus Christ coming down in flaming vengeance and fire. And then you read Revelation, it'll be a summary of everything, of the end times. And then it closes down to the millennium and the beauty of eternity. So that's how you can go from uh, Titus all the way to Revelation. Yeah, thank you very much. That's the somewhat short version of that. <laughs>